right, this is John Cola with GrowingYourGreens.com. Have another exciting episode for you. This episode is going to be definitely a fun one. This is for those of you guys that don't like to do garden maintenance, but want to eat out of your yard. I mean, we're here on a field trip today in Los Angeles, California. You can see this is what your standard front lawn looks like in Los Angeles. And guess what? Grass. It's super high maintenance, man. You got to sit here and water it, fertilize it, mow it, or hire a kid to do it. And they don't really, they're not really productive. I mean, I'm not like seeing kids playing on the yards, playing the grass and all this kind of stuff. It's just, everybody has a lawn because that's what you think you gotta do. But today I'm gonna share with you guys what somebody else did on this same block instead of growing a lawn. And this, they started in 1989, simply growing fruit trees in their front yard instead. What a better use of your real estate than to grow your own food, but more specifically, grow some food that money can't buy. I mean, what we're talking about today is we're talking about rare tropical fruits that can be grown here in Southern California that you just frankly don't see in grocery stores because some of these fruits are not grown on a commercial scale because they're just not financially viable because they don't travel or ship well because they can be a little more challenging to grow because they won't do well in a field because they do need some protected environments. So that being said, you know, this video is specifically for people that live in Southern California or a warm climate where you don't get freezes, maybe like Southern California or Hawaii. And here's the house here. You can see instead of the lawn, they got lush greenage growing on. And these are all fruit trees and a lot of edible. I mean, even just in the front walkway, check it out. We got some passion fruit growing. It's an excellent thing to grow up a hurricane fence. As you see here, you know, the passion fruit's growing. I mean, hurricane fences that look like this are ugly, but fill it up with a passion fruit vine, man. You're growing food, you make it look beautiful, and you got some stuff to eat. Let's go ahead and uh, enter in this uh, front yard fruit tree forest. So upon entering, you're gonna see all different kinds of fruit trees. Here's a mammoth fruit tree here. One of my favorite fruits in the whole wide world. This is persimmons. I mean, this tree produces, look, this thing is totally packed and packed with tons of persimmons. I mean, persimmons you could eat fresh, they're definitely good. You could keep them cool, they'll store for many months. You could also dry them. If you simply cut them and hang them, they'll dry. And if you try to buy dried persimmon, it's like 20 bucks a pound, but with all these persimmons, man, you could be eating literally <laughs> to the next time you get persimmons the following year. So many delicious fruits. They're almost in season. They need to be a nice color before harvesting. Now besides the persimmon tree, hiding over on this area is a little small fig tree that's getting dwarfed by the persimmon tree and especially in a small tight area growing fruit trees it's probably good to keep them pruned down so that they'll produce for you and they won't shade out other trees uh, depending on the fruit tree that you're planting you know I recommend minimal you know 10 feet 12 feet would be good to keep them nice and pruned down if you get dwarf varieties they could be planted more close together uh, going underneath over here we can see we have a couple more uh, fruit trees here. This is actually called the sapodilla, or also known as chico sapote, one of my favorite trees uh, with delicious fruit. This is known as a brown sugar fruit. Literally, when you cut this guy open, it's like brown, and if you get a nice ripe one, it tastes like brown sugar to me. I don't advocate brown sugar, but I advocate the brown sugar fruit, or the sapodilla. Uh, next, here's another really cool one that you have to uh, have a tropical environment. I tried to grow this in Northern California didn't do so well. This is actually called a curry tree. So the curry tree, yes, this is not, you know, that curry spice that you see. This is actually real curry. And uh, if you just use the leaves, you could actually just use the leaves and eat them. Mm, wow, that's some of the best curry I've ever tasted. Right off the tree, man. I always encourage you guys to use fresh herbs instead of dried ones. So besides all the different fruit trees here, this is really cool. They got a few other things that are actually edible. Might be thinking, John, what's up with the roses, man? The roses aren't edible. Actually, the roses are edible. People commonly use the flowers. Uh, you could use the petals and salad. It's quite delicious. Actually, everybody knows the rose hips are edible because they have rose hip teas and whatnot. And many people don't know that even the leaves of the roses are edible. I mean, they'd be known as a famine food. You know, I probably wouldn't be my first choice to be eating my rose leaves, but they're totally edible. Besides the roses, they also have this one, which is really cool, and it, I, I rarely see it. I only know this as leaf ginseng. I don't know the other name, but this one is amazing. Um, 
in my Northern California garden, it's been growing, it goes to seed, kind of like you see here. These seeds will drop and then just start to sprout up everywhere and I'll have a bunch of these guys. This is a warm season crop and I like these guys because you can just literally pick the leaves. They're mildly succulent so they're kind of thick, right? And then you can eat them. Nice, mild, neutral flavor. Super delicious, excellent to put in salads. And this would be a perennial in this climate here in Southern California easily. Before I show you guys some more fruit trees, I want to give a special thanks out to Jasmine who uh, gave me the lead on this place that's doing amazing by just growing fruit trees. I mean, literally a lady planted fruit trees in like 1989 and here it is like 15 odd years later and everything's in full production and doing really well. I mean, I'm sure just a few years after she planted it, she was already eating out of her yard and eating some of the fruits that she was familiar with as a child that literally money can't buy. So uh, let's go check out a few more fruit trees. Over on this side, we have a Surinam cherry. Surinam cherries are really excellent to grow. There's multiple Surinam cherries here, and there's different varieties of Surinam cherries. I mean, just because you see a persimmon doesn't mean you have to get that persimmon. There's so many different kinds and varieties of persimmons. So before planting exotic or any fruit tree, ask experts and ask them, are there other varieties that might do better in my area than others? Some varieties may produce better in higher heat or with less water or grow bigger or grow smaller. Surinam cherry is definitely one of my favorite uh, fruits to be eaten. Over here we have a lemon tree uh, producing really well. Up above here we have one of my favorite trees. This is called a jujube -jube tree or jujube tree and they make uh, apple-like fruits and if you look on the ground you could see them and we're gonna go ahead and show you guys this one now these guys can be eaten fresh and it's kind of like an apple when you eat them fresh when they dry on the tree or outside they kind of get shriveled up and they look like a California raisin I heard it from the grapevine <laughs> actually no I heard it from the jujube tree <laughs> the jujube branch alright so anyways these are my favorite fruits when they're dried I mean these are also known as Chinese dates and when you bite into them, on the inside, it's like a nougat. It's like that Milky Way nougat. It tastes like sweet. Oh, I mean, it has like a bread-like consistency. But this is just a dried fruit, and you don't want it super dried. You want it just faintly dried, and that's when, like, the flavor really comes out. They're nice and sweet. And in China, these are known as a longevity food, so eat more jujubes for a longer life. So over here, we got another tree, and this is really large. It looks like it's been definitely cut back a lot. This is another uh, one of my favorites. It's actually called the Black Sapote, or this is also known as the chocolate fruit. It makes this like dark chocolate-like fruit on the inside. These are nowhere near being right. Uh, it's actually related to the persimmon, but it uh, is not quite as cold tolerant as a persimmon. Black Sapote. Oh, here's one that's kind of getting eaten by the bugs. Kind of see it's just like dark and black on the inside, man. These guys definitely need to be soft. You know, kind of like an avocado when eating them, and they're quite good. They're not super sweet. They have a good flavor. I like to blend the, those uh, chocolate sapotes with dates, and then it's super good. Here's yet another uh, fruit tree or plant here just near the house. This one is actually called Monstera Deliciosa because it has a big monster-like phallic symbol fruit that kind of like has scales like pineapples. The scales need to actually fall off and you could eat it and it has like a pineapple banana flavor. Once again, this is tropical, definitely super delicious. Over on this side we have a banana and this is a, not necessarily a banana tree, people like to call it a banana tree, but it's an actually an herbaceous plant. Looks like it's doing fairly well. Over here we have a chirimoya tree, another um, in the Atamoya family, they're definitely delicious. I think I saw one over there yonder. Over here we have a jabatacaba. So this is like a little tree that actually has little uh, grape-like fruits that grow off the main stem. And let's see, let's see on the ground, like I always like to check on the ground below fruit trees to kind of see what I got. And this is what they look like. I mean, this one's kind of dried out. But this is a Jabba Takaba fruit. These are better than grapes, man. I love these guys a lot. Continuing around right in the front, uh, we got a Kalamondin fruit here. It's kind of like uh, orange or uh, it's a citrus, wow. It's really fragrant, you can really smell the, 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 the zest there. Now besides just growing in the yard, because this yard is full, fully packed of fruit trees, uh, they got some more in pots uh, up near the uh, walkway, so let's go ahead and show those to you guys. 
first we have this guy. And if you want to plant a tree that's going to provide you with leafy greens to eat, this is probably the tree. Plus, you also have to live somewhere where it doesn't freeze. It's actually called the Moringa tree. And this Moringa tree is towering over me. So this is like over six feet tall. And the amazing thing is I want to show you guys what it's being grown in. Check it out. It's literally just being grown in this one pot right here. And this pot is only halfway full of soil. The soil level only comes up to here. So that's totally amazing. Not even a lot of soil, the Moringa tree will grow. And the cool thing about the Moringa is if you chop it off and replant it, it should probably grow new roots and sprout back up again. Off the top half, the bottom half will just continue to put out new leaves for you to eat. I love the Moringa and it's one of my favorite leafy greens on a tree to eat. Very nutritious, actually. Up over here, you can see, uh, you know, the citrus that we saw earlier. And then over on this side, we got a couple cool things. We got a little small guava tree here that's just, once again, in a small little planter on the patio. So a lot of these trees do not need a lot of root space. Of course, the more root space you can grow the tree, the better it's going to produce for you. But even in a small space, the tree's going to stay smaller, but still produce, but not be as productive as it could be. Finally, over here, we have one of my favorites fruit trees to grow because not only can you use the fruit, you can actually use the leaves. So this is a citrus. This is actually called the kaffir lime. The kaffir lime, you can see there's a whole bunch of limes just uh, sitting right here. And these are edible, uh, you know, citrus, edible limes. But more importantly, these leaves, these leaves, if you go into a store, you know, sell for like a couple bucks just for a leaf or two. And how they use these leaves is in cooking, you could use these leaves as a flavoring agent. Hmm. Has a nice citrus scent to that. Wow, quite strong. Just a little bit goes a long way. So next what we're going to do is we're going to actually go into the backyard and share with you guys what's growing in the backyard because there's even more fruit trees here. So now we're going to go ahead and check out the backyard. I mean, a lot of these backyards, I mean, there's not a lot of space in it. Maybe like your backyard, there's like a little driveway and a little patch of... Uh, ground where there's nothing growing that could definitely put a vegetable garden in there but you know vegetable gardens are high maintenance and that's why I like the fruit trees I mean check this out here in this backyard there's a whole bunch of different fruit trees and these are fruits literally money can't buy I mean we was at the farmers market just a couple blocks down the street they didn't have some of these tropical exotic fruits at the farmers market but they're literally here growing in the backyard and just with the investment of a you know some money and some trees you plant them and nurture them and they're gonna come to fruition literally fruition so what we're looking at here is a really cool one I've never seen before this is actually a purple guava and uh, it has a uh, nice dark leaves this is how they look and then when they're ripe they'll get um, they'll, they'll turn color so that would be a nice vibrant color like this nice reddish color here and it should generally uh, detract or come off the uh, vine pretty easy then you gotta make sure you wipe it in the right place give it some uh, give it some spice and all that jazz then we're gonna go ahead and break this guy open and check it out. I mean, guavas, I've never seen a guava like this. These are like rare fruits. Look at that. Deep, rich purple on the inside and better than how it looks. Whew, man, is how it smells. This stuff smells like the best perfume. I wonder if you smeared this all over if you'd smell like that. But let me, let me go ahead and tell you how it tastes. And you can also eat the skin on these guys. Wow, man, this guava lights me up. And fresh fruit should light you up too. Fruit, in my opinion, one of the best foods on the earth to be eaten. Besides just this guava, the purple one, which is really rare, I've never seen this before, they also got a sweet and sour guava. So this one's a bit sweet, also then it'll hit you with some sour notes. So when you grow trees in your backyard, you get to choose, and I would highly discourage you guys to just choose a standard apple and orange. Grow different things, push the envelope, grow fruit trees that money can't buy that'll give you unique flavored sensations and also unique phytochemicals and phytonutrients, vitamins, minerals that you're not getting anywhere else. Over on the side of the yard, they got a, a tangerine or mandarin tree just coming out the sidewalk. I mean, even if you have, you know, not a lot of space, you could just have a hole and the roots will go down and seek out nutrients and whatnot. I always encourage you to plant your trees actually on a mound and enrich the ground very well with some good compost rock dust minerals, worm castings, and all that jazz. In addition, another Suriname cherry. These things grow like weeds here. You can see the little Suriname cherries uh, just starting to develop. They're green on here. They're gonna turn into probably a nice deep red or purple color. Up above here, we have an Atamoya. So this is, a uh, you know, in the relative of the Cherimoya. Not currently producing, but this is a nice, huge, beautiful tree. 
over here we have yet another Suriname cherry. And you know, the Suriname cherry actually is used as a landscape and decorative tree in many places these days. It grows really well in Southern California. Now, I want to remind you guys that most of these trees will not survive if you get frosts. So even in places like Northern California, not going to optimally do well unless you live in the Bay Area, maybe Fremont, where it just doesn't get too cold. Over here we have the white sapote. So she's got all the different sapotes covered. And then finally in the back here we got a mame sapote, uh, which she says uh, hasn't really produced for her. So don't necessarily recommend that. The white sapote, you know, will do fabulous in this area and produce really well. I definitely love my white sapotes. I mean, that's pretty much it for this whole backyard, aside from uh, two more trees that I don't even know the English name because these are uh, actually Filipino fruits that I don't know the name of. And the thing I want to remind you guys, if you do live in Southern California, even Northern California, you want to join the organization California Rare Fruit Growers. That's how she found out about growing all these unique tropicals and found a member in the organization that basically held her hand, got her started with growing fruit trees and doing this because literally growing fruit trees is the easiest thing you'll ever grow. Unlike vegetables that you need to tend to, once you plant a fruit tree and nurture it, give it some water, I mean it pretty much does its own thing year after year. It'll give you some delicious fruit to eat uh, to feed you and your family. Once again, I always encourage you guys to eat foods out of your yard instead of the grocery store. It's going to save money, they're going to be healthier, and the pride of growership is just phenomenal. I'm glad that I got to share this episode with you guys today. And once again, even in a small tight space, you can grow some fruit trees. And I love my fruits and vegetables too. All right, so once again, my name is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com. We'll see you next time. And remember, keep on growing. All right, this is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com. Today I have another exciting episode for you. And uh, what I'm going to talk about today is something near and dear to my heart. It's, uh, I'm going to talk about bricks testing.